Hello and welcome to the second episode of how to become an ion driver. I will be covering tips and tricks to help us, but first of all, help you become a better driver. In this video, we'll be doing a track analysis for the Grease track in Ion Formula Racing 2020. I will also be doing uh, a lab analysis of project user and answering a comment I had on my last video. So let's get right into it. So first of all, let's go to our question of the day. Our question of the day is from Dark4C. He is a close friend of mine and he is also the engineer for Dakir in Ferrari. He said, how do I find a good setup for myself as this one doesn't work well for me? I just want to say this is a really great question and it will help a lot of people. And a lot of people always ask, people, uh, ask in chat, what setup should I use? What's the best setup for this track? And sometimes not all setups fit uh, fit everyone so for finding a, a great setup for yourself it's all about trial and error you need to try setups see if they work if they don't you're gonna change them uh, first thing you're gonna do though is talk to people or just um, look at the track map the track layout to do a couple of laps and see how the track is and you're just gonna conclude a base setup that you're gonna uh, use from there once you get that base set up you're gonna go out in your car see how your car behaves with the setup see what kind of times you get uh, for the basics and um, if you're new to racing this is something you need to know if you have understeer you need to increase your front wing downforce if you have oversteer you're gonna increase your rear wing downforce if you uh, but sometimes if you have oversteer you might consider lowering your front wing downforce or if you have too much drag on the straight your car is not fast enough on the straight you see people uh, uh, going faster than you on the straight while they have the same uh, engine upgrades that's because you have too much uh, drag on your car so you're gonna try to lower it as much as possible most drivers in fp sessions in the actual league they would start on a high setup and then start uh, cutting uh, downforce slowly down and uh, one by one so you're gonna go on 13 13 for example see how well your track be uh, car behaves I wouldn't actually recommend starting on 13 13 I would recommend starting in the middle maybe like 7 7 or 8 8 I personally always start with 8 8 see how your car behaves if you see there's not too many places where you might lose the rear I'd say crank down that rear downforce by two or three maybe just one if you want to play it safe if you haven't uh, if your car always touches the apex uh, it's like uh, uh, you have a, uh, a lot of uh, grip on the front I'd say try lowering down and see if you can still hit the, those apexes to reduce the um, the drag as much as possible and uh, like I said uh, just keep trying and trying and find the best setup for yourself not all setups are uh, good for you uh, there isn't just one setup that everyone is gonna be a god at some tracks you can go on one one and you're gonna set the fastest laps some tracks you need to go on 13 13 to not crash at all so it's all about how you drive and how you want to drive and take it safe so that's all for the comments of the day uh, we're gonna go to our track analysis next so here we are in the garage and let's talk about Greece for a little bit Greece is not an easy track. It's quite challenging with all the bumps, the deadly curves, and the final chicane. I believe you can easily conclude this if you have watched the third round of the season in Ion where only 13 drivers finished the race, with the likes of myself and many other drivers crashing out. I think I can play a clip of the mayhem I caused, so enjoy that. He was wanting an actual- Wait, what the heck? There is a car in the middle of the street! Does the care see him? Uh Oh, oh that's a no better. Oh. oh That's Thanks two again. cars, that's Thanks two again. cars. There's a Valera as, well. as well Yep Everyone's avoiding oh, him Oh, that's a Brad Star, a McLaren, Brad Star McLaren Oh my Anyways, while that was an interesting race We are here to teach you how to be quick and consistent on this track 
So first thing I would like to talk about is your setup. So before we talk about the setup, I need to talk to you about the track. So as you can see in, uh, in front of you, this is the track map of the Thessaloniki Greece track. It has 18 turns it's a, and it's a counterclockwise circuit. So it's very heavy on your uh, front left tires. As you can see, there's two DRS zones, both of them, one of them is uh, after turn five, the other one is after turn 15. There is a very deadly chicane, which is turn 17 and 18. I would like you to keep to pay attention to turn four. It's very bumpy and the straight after it has a very special bump there that you need to be careful of. Turn six, seven and eight is an easy place to lock up in as well as turn nine. Turn 10, 11, 12 and 13 are very high speed corners. With 13, you need to start breaking just after it. Turn 15, uh, 14 and 15 are quite easy to learn. And I'll be making sure to teach uh, those to you. Okay, now let's get back to our setup. So as you can see, this track needs about average uh, aero setup. Uh, for me personally, I can drive with 7.5. It's a bit challenging, a bit understeery, but I can drive with it. Uh, if you want to play it safe, you can try 8.8. 8. I would recommend having it lower on the rear side of the car because uh, there there are two long straights on this track with the RS zones as well as the straight, uh, start finish straight and uh, some medium size one uh, in other places. Uh, for the front side of the car, uh, I'd recommend uh, if you feel like the car is still under steering and it's not steering well, uh, steering well, you're not hitting the apex you want. I'd recommend um, going to. Okay, someone just saw my car. Uh, um, uh, well, there goes my car. But I'd recommend uh, going with nine aero and uh, yeah, if you see yourself spinning a lot, getting a lot of oversteer, you're obviously gonna crank up the rear side of the car. So let me spawn my car again. Um, I would like to point out. No, let's see. I would like to also point out, uh, point out that I'm playing on controller again and I'm auto on automatic transmission. Um, I can drive around this track with manual, but um, uh, I really want to focus on the lines for this video. If you would like manual transmission videos, just let me know and I'll be sure to do them. If you also have any questions, any tips, um, anything you notice, please leave it in the comments. So here we are just after the deadly chicane and as you can see, someone flipped there. So uh, I, I think you can understand why I like to call it the deadly chicane. It's quite a pain in the ass. So let us start uh, our track analysis. So you're gonna pass the chicane. You're gonna be going very quick, even though it's a tight chicane. You're gonna try to stay as much to the right as possible. I, I think you already will be because of the chicane. And then you're, uh, you're gonna deploy a bit of ERS if you want. Uh, that's really up to you, but I, I recommend it. You should disable ERS at this point and you should start paying attention for your breaking point for this corner. This corner is quite interesting because if you go wide, you go to the sand or the curb. Uh, I just want to talk about the curves for a little bit on this track. There are blue and white curves and there are blue only curves. Uh, the blue and white curves are, uh, they make your car very unstable, while the blue curves are perfect. They, they're always in your apex and um, they really help you have the best line. So always take the blue curves, try to avoid the blue and white curves as much as possible. But if you have to take them, uh, just be careful. So here we're going to be going down here very quick, very fast. And as soon like your braking mark should be at the start of this curb. Uh, it should be like one meter, two meters before. If you're going slow if, or if you're confident you have maybe uh, more downforce on the front, you can like wait in uh, here like after the first white part. You, you just make sure to try every braking mark possible for this corner and see what fits you the most. So that's it for the uh, breaking mark and you're gonna try to brake as straight as possible to not have any tire wear on your front tires and not lock up. 
you're gonna start uh, as, as soon as you see yourself slow down you should start turning in let go of the brakes and start turning in at around this point you you want to, to um, go on this uh, apex like that um, if you go too too much on the left you're gonna have a corner cut or maybe hit the sausage curb so try to avoid that and try to touch this apex as smooth as possible it might make your car unstable if your uh, rear down force is very low but uh, just try everything and see what works best for you you're gonna come out of this corner going straight to this white and blue curb as i said before white and blue curbs are uh, kind of dangerous they make your car unstable most of the time i go on this curb but uh, i try to avoid it as much as possible uh, sometimes you go on it and it, it, as you can see it makes your car vibrate uh, I, I go on it but try to save the, my car as much as possible so just try to keep it in the white lines if you can't try to have a, a way of saving your car uh, a driver always needs quick reactions and quick solution uh, finding so if you see yourself in a sick situation you need to be able to get out of it as quick as possible so for the next set of okay there goes someone without a tire anyways so for this next set of corners it's uh, really important to have the best sector one times you're going to be coming very quick from that last corner and you're gonna uh, be on the right track of uh, the right side of the track and you're gonna try to go to the left side of the track as much as possible so you see that curve on the right side uh, on the left side you're gonna try to go here or like next to it almost such a try if you go on this track on this curb you're gonna go wide on the next corner or you're gonna hit the wall straight ahead i don't know what this dude is doing but if you uh, as you can see here uh these i don't know what you even call them these spheres balls or whatever if you hit those you're going to the air you're going airborne uh, I, i'll see you on the moon okay so try to avoid that don't uh, so you're gonna stick here you're gonna touch the brakes a little bit maybe a bit uh, depends on your speed really but you need to brake for this corner a little bit i usually brake at the start of each curb uh, you can break later, you can break earlier, you can not break, just let go of the throttle. You can also just let go of the throttle for this corner if you're not going very quick to keep up your speed. And for this apex, you're gonna touch it at around here. This is just to uh, actually, okay, my car got stuck there. But yeah, you just go on here and you need to find a good exit so you can have a good entry for turn four which is very dangerous and very brutal so you go around here and you try to keep it as straight as possible so you can start breaking here uh, for the breaking here uh, i personally just it's uh, muscle memory uh, you can just um, use uh, you see this line on my uh, on the left side of your screen that looks like um uh, emergency exits or something like that you can mark that as your breaking point for example so as you can see it's on my uh, my right right now and you can see you can mark that as your the start of your breaking point and you need to start turning in and let go of the brakes and try to touch this apex while going wide and aiming for this curb i said aiming for the curb don't touch the curb okay this curb is very brutal it can make you spin it can make you hit the wall it can make you lose a lot of time so try to avoid it go wide aim for it but don't actually touch it if you touch it try to save your car as uh, uh, fast as possible so for the next uh, so after this exit corner uh, this exit you're gonna start steering to the right to get ready for your next corner this is basically a straight but it's not long but it has a special bump that you need to be careful of uh, i'm just gonna wait here i don't see any cars behind me so i think you just saw my car do a special move that was the bump if you're going fast it might make your car do a wheelie so just make sure you're not steering at the time that your car is um is hitting that bump and you you can't really avoid that bump just to have a straight car going into that bump 
and uh, if your car becomes unstable be ready to save it uh, for this corner it's very bumpy this is turn five it's very bumpy on the inside of the corner so what that basically means and uh yeah it also has a long straight drs zone after it so th what this means is it needs a late apex so you can have so you can carry as much speed possible into the corner and and avoid the inside curves that always always make your car unstable so here i'm sticking to the right and I start braking at around here. If you want to take it risky, if you have high downforce on the front wing, you can start braking at the end of the curb. But for me personally, I start braking here. Maybe even before sometimes. But if you're too early, you're gonna hit the inside bumps. So here, I, I start braking, I go wide. I try av to avoid going outside the uh, white lines because if I do, the car becomes unstable. I almost lose the car. And it's gonna be hard coming back on track and it loses you a lot of time. So try to avoid that and try to steer it perfectly and try to bring your car back in and go here. And this is the apex. This is the late apex you need to be touching. And just after it, you're gonna have a straight exit into the DRS zone. You're gonna deploy ERS and you're just gonna push and get ready for the next corner. So this is our next corner as you can see it's turning to the right a little bit then to the left and then even tighter to the left which you can't see yet. So here um, you're gonna be coming uh, from around this angle try to come from this angle and then you, you're gonna try to stick to this as you can see the curve becomes straight for this last part so you're gonna try to align yourself with it and start braking at around this point uh, or even actually before it you're gonna break for a little bit and start turning in you you might you can touch this apex but you should aim a bit wide here and then you're gonna push you at this point you should be breaking even more for this tighter corner and then uh, you should turn in and touch this apex and just start to accelerate after that last apex and just steer your car to the left here and you're gonna go to the right and then keep steering it to the left to get you ready for the next corner uh, for this corner it's quite easy to lock up people forget about it and you're gonna either lock up and go wide because you forgot to break for it or you're gonna be too careful and break too early and cut the corner and you're gonna get the cut slow down so what you want to do here is find the perfect breaking point it should be around this point and you're just gonna try to keep the car straight while braking and let go of the brakes and aim for this apex sometimes as you can see the corner gets tighter and sometimes i personally go wide here so what you want to do is sometimes you need to brake a little bit more once you touch this part and then push and then when you push here it's I wouldn't call it a straight, maybe like a swervy straight. This is gonna be full speed, no braking, uh, no letting go of the throttle, nothing like that. If you, if your car feels unstable or touches the bump, let go of the throttle and try to stabilize it. If it's, it's, if you actually start losing the car even more, start to break in and avoid crashing into the wall this is important for racing if you're just practicing i don't think hitting the wall would matter that much but it's good to learn in practice how to avoid it so after this corner you're gonna be going to the right here and you're gonna be pushing full throttle enable ers at the start of the corner to get a good exit and good acceleration ers deployment really matters for this track so you're gonna be going full throttle, sticking to the right as much as possible. You're gonna see the two balls to the left and the blue curves I talked about. You're gonna be all over these blue curves in this part of the track. You're gonna be pushing full throttle through this part and you're just gonna start turning in to the second part. And then you're gonna go to the right as much as possible again and go to the left to have a straight exit 
out of it and then get ready for this corner which is also full speed but as soon as you pass that apex you're gonna start breaking to get ready for the ne this next one you're gonna be on the right side of the track and you're gonna be pushing left when you go left you're gonna try to touch this apex and keep on it so you uh, uh, and try to avoid this curve I'm looking at right now. It makes your car unstable and makes you run wide into the DRS zone where you need a lot of speed and throttle. So I try to go here, maybe touch it a little bit on here and then come back here to touch this apex. Sometimes you might even need to break more for this last part I just passed. For here, you enable ERS at the start and en enable the RS. It's a long straight and after it is the deadly chicane. Or I like to call it the deadly chicane. So let's go here. And for this chicane, I have a very specific breaking point for it. So this chicane, if you break too early, you're gonna hit the inside the balls or whatever you call them. If you break too late, you're dead, you're done, you're dead, you're gonna hit the outside curves. You need to aim it perfectly to, to leave as much uh, speed as possible as well as have the best line. So as you can see there is a curb to the inside or the left side of me right here. And then you can see it's turning in a little bit. I would I start breaking at this exact point where the curb becomes straight and I start breaking in I break a little bit and around this point as you can see you can see about a straight line from here into the start finish straight so what I do is let go of the brakes and push here touch this apex touch this apex keep a straight angle push hard deploy ERS and start my new lap okay I uh, I hope that helped you guys understand this track more uh, if you have any questions please leave them down below so next up I'm gonna do my own hot lap So there we go, that's a hot, nice hot lap, I'm very happy with it, it was my first try as well, um, I qu I'm quite happy with that, I didn't have the um, DRS because there is a race going on, but I would like to also remind you guys I have a very upgraded engine, so that really helps me on this track with the long streets and stuff like that. Thank you guys for watching this video until the end, I really appreciate it. If you made it to the end, make sure to comment down below telling me you made it to the end. Leave, com uh, leave any questions you have in the comments as well and any tips you have for me to make better videos or either be become a better driver myself, I'd really appreciate it. I'm sorry I couldn't make it to the pr uh, lap analysis. This video is already long enough and I didn't want to make it any longer. Uh, I might do an, a lap analysis in a different video or I may, might uh, make a specific video just for it. Uh, if you want to send me your laps for me to analyze, I'd be very happy to do so. I'd also like to mention that someone asks me to do France and Australia. 
I tried to make videos in those, but I'm very bad at the tracks uh, as of right now. I'm trying to get better at them, and once I'm ready, I'm gonna make videos on those as well. So thanks again for watching. Make sure to subscribe, turn on notifications, and like the video. I'll see you in the next one.